All right, here we are once again, uh, SDG Weekly episode 206, covering Espigaluda. Very nice. Uh, this has been a requested um, game for an episode for probably years at this point. Um, you know, one of those uh, cave games that's fairly popular uh, did get a pretty good PlayStation 2 port back in the day. Um, and still has not been ported. We're going to have to wait for that. Except for Galuda 2. But I am going to be co-hosted by Maximo. What's going on, Maximo? Hey, hey, hey. This of course, yeah. And I'm, I'm Aquas, of course. And uh, Icarus is going to be our guest and player of one of the replays for this episode. So welcome, Icarus. What's up, everyone? How are you doing? Good evening. Yeah, so like I say, this has uh, been pretty, like, uh, like you know, this was this would probably be a, like, you know, an episode people are looking forward to. Um, Icarus, I know, was, uh, you know, has played this game for years. Um, of course, uh, in Escaluda, you it's like um, part of the ESB Rade series, I guess, because you have ESP Raid or Rade or whatever you want to say. And then you have Galuda and you have Galuda 2. Uh, all the games feature psycho kinetic power using youths and people. Um, I don't know the Galuda story too well, but essentially you have the same deal in Galuda, but in Galuda, you have a uh, button two is your awaken button or coxe, and that will slow down the bullets. And then when you kill enemies of the slowed down bullets, it cancels all the bullets and turns it into gold. And then when you build that gold up, you can start getting some score. Of course, we're going to go into this much deeper and deep as we go on, but, uh, and then you just collect uh, green gems by just shooting stuff. Um, so that's what you use to you uh, you use the green gems to turn on the uh, awakening mode, um, as they had, as it as it directly translates to. Um, and then also you have button three, which is your uh, guard barrier. So this is also retained from ESP uh, Esprade, the guard barrier mechanic, and uh, you know that can be a chargeable bomb or it can be used as an emergency bomb. Um, when you have uh, your um, awakening active, because it's a toggle. But yeah, so that's kind of what you got with uh, Galuda. Um, has a pretty awesome dance soundtrack and stuff, and part of the reason why a lot of people like it, and also kind of approachable for uh, new players as well. A lot of people do like this game, I think, the first time they try it. So it's kind of like the onus for Galuda in general. But why don't we go to uh, our stories with uh, Galuda? Starting with Icarus, like, uh, how'd you get into playing Galuda? This might be going back quite a ways, but... Um, and then what brought you to wanting to press the score more? And you can even get into some of the mechanics if you want in doing so. Yeah, I mean, I've been playing this since the game came out on PS2. Because I remember, like, way back when um, I actually bought a PS2 for Dodonpachi Daiojo. Um, and that was actually pretty good for a time, and then ESP Galuda came out for it, and I bought it on day one and started playing that. Um, and this was like, I think, around about 2004, 2005. Um, I've always found this game to be pretty good fun, actually, because um, unlike Dodon Pachi Dojo, as we were just discussing off screen before, um, this game is like much better catered to, you know, not only beginners, but also for people, you know, coming back to the game, because the game. The scoring system is very short burst oriented, so you're basically taking chunks of the stage at one time for scoring, very much similar to, you know, Dodo, uh, sorry, Do Don Patchy. Um, and it's actually quite easy to pick up. Um, so the, the game's basic mechanic, as you mentioned, um, with Kakuse slows bullets down. So for beginners, you can actually use that to, you know, basically slow down whole sections of the, the stage and actually make it easier for you. But for scoring, it's actually quite involving because that there's quite a lot of uh, uh, mechanics that intertwine with each other, not just with the Kakuse system, but there's also things like Kakuse Overmode as well, which is the, the rank system behind it. Um, and also little features like um, uh, little features to do with how you actually get the green gems as well. Yeah, I actually picked this up on PS2 like years and years ago and I actually really enjoyed it mo enough to actually want to learn to play it. but. Uh, Funnily enough, when I first started playing it, I started playing as Agaha, the other character, uh, the male character, um, who has like quite a powerful like series of attacks. But I found that he's actually quite difficult to play for score, um, just basically because his attacks aren't nearly as uh, 
um, easy to use as Tadahaz is. Um, so Agaha is basically the narrow shot user, and like Dodonpachi's Type B, when you move left and right, his uh, one of the bullet streams kind of sweeps left and right, so he gets sort of a pseudo wide. But uh, I don't really like the way that he controls. Um, so I went with Tadaha instead and found that she's way more consistent to pay for score. Um, one of the reasons behind that is because um, when you kill enemies, um, you usually get green gems. Um, but if you kill them near the top of the screen, you actually get more than usual. So like uh, there's a little uh, section at the top of the screen, like uh, not a dead zone, but like um, a special designated area where if you kill an enemy up there, you actually get like maybe 10, 20% more gems than usual, which is uh, how you actually play this for score. Uh, so the idea is that you want to try and kill things as quickly as possible before they have a chance to come down the bottom of the screen. And I found it a lot easier to do with Tadaha in this case, which is why I ended up playing with the score. Um, and I also found a quite more consistent to pay for score as well uh, as a result because a lot of my routing became more consistent um, in terms of like getting you know green gems and paying for score. Yeah, I think the I mean the main appeal of Agaha I think wasn't I mean he does more damage, right? Yeah, a lot more yeah. damage. Yeah, but his uh, his laser is actually probably the most powerful attack in the game. Um, but in, like I said, in terms of playing for score, I think he's quite a lot more involving and also slightly more inconsistent if you don't have a, a clear route through the stages. Because like I said, you, the way to play this for score is that you need to constantly get the correct amount of gems for each section um, as part of your route. And if you're not like playing to a route, then your green gems will be constantly fluctuating with Agaha. Like, you know, one section like here, for example, you could be like at 200. Next time you play, you could be like 120, something like that. So. Yeah. Um, your scoring is never really consistent with Agaha unless you're playing very, very strictly. Whereas with Tadaha, because she's got a wide shot, she covers the entire screen, which means that you can kill virtually everything at the top of the screen, meaning that your green gem count will usually be quite consistent if you're playing to a, a general route. So, yeah. Almost mm. feels like Tadaha is the more advanced character, and then Agaha is more kind of like you just pick up and play and, you know. Yeah. You can yeah, destroy stuff I mean, pretty good, and he moves faster, I believe, as yeah, well. Yeah, Agaha is the fastest of the characters. So Everyone um, loves to move fast in shmups, right? So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, if you're playing, if you're a beginner, then yeah, picking Agaha usually is, like, a good move because he can basically annihilate everything on screen pretty quickly, including bosses. I know, um, I know um, it's like with Galuda too, it's like when you play the weaker characters, you really have to deal with the uh, more of the boss patterns. Like, is that the case with Tatiha yes. as well? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. Um, in Galuda 2, I think they changed the balance so that, you know, Agaha is even more powerful compared to the other characters. But mm. uh, I think Asagi, the third character, she actually, like, scales in power as you go through. So she starts off the right. weakest, but she ends as the strongest, which is kind of funny, but that's Galuda 2. <laughs> and then, well, then <laughs> Tateha kind of, does she catch up, I guess, when you, because you know you're powering up, right, throughout the game? <laughs> Not necessarily. I All think right. Tadaha is generally quite weak in both games. Like, she's really weak in this one. Like, um, outside of her, like, um, Kakusei laser, um, which is actually on par with Agaha's, like, standard laser. Um, but outside of that, she is extremely weak. So you do have to be, like, a little bit more precise with how you play as Tadaha. Um, because in this game, like, uh, you kind of want to try and, like, control the amount of damage you do to enemies so that when you switch into Kakusei, you can like destroy like big groups of them like correctly. Um, instead, uh, most beginners when they're playing, they'll just be switching to Kakusei and then just destroying everything as they can. Um, but when you're playing for score, you need to be like quite precise with you know what you're targeting and you know how much damage you're doing. Yeah, um, that thing is why it's like. like... Mid... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say not only to mid bosses but only to uh, to bosses as well. Yeah. I thought it was like yeah, nice beginner-friendly mechanics. Like obviously, it's good for great for scoring and great scoring mechanics. But uh, just the fact you can slow down the bullets was the big appeal, I think, to the wide audience in yeah. this game. Yeah. And uh, being able to just have a button that does that is pretty cool. Yeah, it's one of the most. It's one of the more unique um, features of uh, this game, um, like the slow down mechanic. And I think it's. What people like tend to latch onto to you know make yeah. it easy. Because I think a lot of people consider ESP Galuda as one of the easiest cave games to you know one CC, which is true to be honest. Because if you're just playing it for survival, you can use 
you know, kakase as and when required. Um, and you're always going to be getting lots and lots of gems outside of it. So um, as long as you're like managing your resources carefully, you can clear this game quite easily. You get a lot of guard barrier as well. Like guard barrier is the bomb in this case, and it's a charge bomb. Um, usually you can get like, I think like four like tap bombs out of it. But uh, if you hold it down, you can like charge it up until it's like extremely powerful and you can wipe out boss forms that way. And you get given quite a lot of it as well. Like, if you're playing, like, uh, at least for a little bit of score as well, you can get quite a fair amount of lives as well, as you can see here on the video. It's like six lives maximum. Um, one item life and uh, two score lives. I think uh, it's at 4 million and 14 million are the score um, thresholds for the lives. And hitting 14 million is actually not too difficult for beginners to do if you're just playing carefully. Because uh, so you get given a lot of Kakase gems, and there's right. a lot of, like, big scoring opportunities as well. I really like uh, how they balanced, yeah, the scoring with just the fun factor. And I think that's yeah. really was the success of this game. Yeah, this is like, exactly. You know, it was yeah. like pretty yeah. golden era cave type stuff because you'd have like Mushi Misama coming out. Yeah, around this time yeah, I mean, and man, the thing with uh, the scoring in this, with it being short burst chaining, as I mentioned before, is that you can actually work in chaining as and when you want to. Um, you're not like. Yeah to like chain the entire stage if you don't want to or if you can't you can take like, do you big chunks of it a as lot. You want exactly mm -hmm. yeah i mean you don't have to follow strict routes you can be a little bit more flexible as well like say for example if you take a hit somewhere you don't you're not immediately thrown off your route you can go straight back into it if you're just a little bit more careful um so it's actually quite good for beginners to learn you know score play as well because it, it teaches you good fundamentals and it also is um flexible and extensible enough um, to allow you to actually increase your score as you go as well. That's a pretty good uh, primer on <clears throat> the game's mechanics and stuff, but I did want to ask, like, when you played the PS2 version, uh, was the game playable in MAME at the time? Do you remember, or um, did you even try to do that back then? I don't think I actually played it in MAME. I think MAME actually got it not long after. Because um, mm. I think around about 2004 was when it came out, so I think MAME probably got it, like, Few years later than that and even then i think mame's emulation wasn't particularly good anyway so but the yeah. ps2 port is like really really good anyway because yeah it is i think it's like almost arcade perfect plus it also features um some really good training um uh, mm. setups as well like uh, training mode's really good it not only mm. can you yeah, not only can you set it up to your liking but you can also use a saved replay as your basis as well because the game actually also allows you to save stage replays to the memory card, which is pretty nice. Um, and if you use training mode, you can use the replay as your starting point. So it actually loads the, the replay with like your gem count, your life count, your gold count, your power up level. Um, so it's actually a pretty good way of learning the game that way. So I think um, for the most part back then, I don't think we really needed like MAME to learn anything because the yeah. PS2 port was already pretty, pretty good for what it is. That's pretty nice. I mean, back then, you know, having all those options that was like top tier type yeah. uh port and you know still holds up you know that yeah, that standard that standard you know has kind of been it's kind of there now for all serious shmups i think hopefully yeah, it's a uh, decent training modes yeah i think um you know esp galuda and uh dodon pachi daiojo um back then were like like you said the gold standard for the ports coming up because they had not only really good accuracy but they also had like a lot of additional features that were um quite nice to have like you know training um they had like onboard replays as well in some cases and uh, at least in terms of um they were actually with doj and esp glue they also had a uh, some really good arrange modes as well which is always nice to have um not strictly yeah. necessary of course but uh back then i think a lot of people really enjoyed both galuda range and uh DOJ um, death label, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah we were considering maybe adding an arranged segment, but it's, it might carry yeah. on a little too, too long, but uh, the arranged for Galuda is pretty cool. I mean, it's pretty fully fledged, right? So yes. definitely would yeah, be think, worthy uh, of uh, talking about. Maybe we'll, you can talk maybe you can talk a little bit about it in your, later or so, but yeah. Yeah, I would pretty much think that Galuda arranges its own thing because it's actually pretty pretty clever how it's set up, so yeah. But uh, it's a nice one. If no, if, if you haven't checked it out before, then I would pretty much uh, recommend you know people watching to go and take a look at it because it's 
pretty hilarious. <laughs> All right, well, uh, that's a pretty good uh, starting point for uh, this episode, I would say, and you can get into uh, some of the lingering mechanics we may have missed on, uh, missed, missed touching on. But uh, we are going to go to your 59.02 million um, 1cc clear with Tateha on the player 2 side. I guess I'll ask mm-hmm. you right now, uh, why do you play on the player two side for this That's game? That's basically a carryover from the arcade version. Uh, with the arcade version, there was a, a bug on the stage three boss where if you played on the player two side, you actually got more um, destructible mines and more bullets spawning. So it was better for ah. score to play on the player two side. It's actually fixed on the PS2 so that both player one and player two side have the same thing. But okay. I just play on PS2 side because I'm sort of used to playing it from the arcade version, and uh, you know the guard cool. barrier bar and everything is in the right place for me to actually you know pay attention to my resources. So it's more out of habit than anything else. Gotcha. Um, and then what's what about a little bit of uh, history with the what's like the back the context for like this replay? I guess this replay actually um, last year I went to an arcade meetup in France. Um, it's at James's game center. It's called like uh, this French collector called James invited a bunch of us over, including the likes of Jamers and Plasma and uh, everybody else. And I went down to like, you know, just have a bit of fun. And, but I ended up playing a lot of Galuda when I was down there. Um, and when I got back, I just fancied picking it back up again. But I also wanted to pick it up because uh, I still had some unfinished business with this. Uh, my previous PB before... Um, I picked it up last year again. It was like 30, uh, 53.9, um, which I thought was okay, but I had quite a lot of pretty bad mistakes in that run. So I wanted to actually, one, beat it, um, two, get over 55 million, and three, get as close to 60 million as I can. I got almost to my target. I think uh, the only reason why I didn't actually push the 60 was Armored Core 6 was coming out, and that was taking up most of my play time afterwards. Oh man! Um, but at some point in the future, I will come back to this and try and push for the sixty because uh, I'm not going to spoil it. There is uh, something in here that I do want to improve on. Mm-hmm. Um, well, mm. when was your previous PB set uh, versus Oof. the the current one you got? Two thousand and five. So I got my previous PB oh, wow. back when the PS2 version okay, was still wow. pretty fresh. Yeah. So if you yeah, I mean, once it's been that long, if you're into shmups like. You kind of level up over the years, right? So you kind of expected you'd be able to you'd be able to do it at this point, pretty easily. Um, I or no? <laughs> wouldn't say I expected to. I wouldn't say I really expected to get uh, get it so quickly. But uh, okay. Um, but like I said before, this game is actually quite nice to pick back up because with it being short burst scoring, you don't have to like go all or nothing for learning. You can learn like bits of it as your leisure. But. Uh, I think the other thing is as well is that this game isn't too difficult to pick up because the routing is not massively complex with it being short burst chaining. So um, I think when I picked it up, I actually beat my PB like quite quickly, but pushing from the new PB to 59 was uh, a lot more challenging and had to do oh, quite okay. a lot of uh, additional study and routing in order to get it, particularly with the last boss, because the last boss has always been a problem for me. And uh, I spent like, I think, maybe one evening trying to figure out a lot of its patterns and finally got it and then put it all together like a couple of days later i know so i know the ps2 version includes a uh, super play like did you mostly study that i mean that was must have been nice to be able to study that back in the day yes like, i did study better. that back in the day yeah because the ps2 version comes with the super play dvd um, which has i think ktl now and um clover tax replays on there both 72 million um, which were considered world record at the time, um, or close to it. Um, so it was nice to study that, but there is something about the super player which um, is interesting, at least from Tatahar's side, and something that I can't replicate because it's control-based. Um, there's like very specific parts in those replays where um, Clover Attack, um, I think, does like very, very, very short bursts of shot which is technically impossible to do on standard controls. So I'm not sure um, mm. if he has like a specific control setup with like, I don't know, frame by frame modifier or something, but uh, I said it's impossible to do specific tricks in those replays. Um, and I've looked for ways to do it and I've tried to do research on it and I just cannot find it. So I think uh, 
yeah, those uh, those things are not possible to do. <clears throat> um, and then we got a quick question from the chat. Uh, I think I assume you're playing the three plays from Mame, I believe, right? This is the PS2 version. Oh, it is the PS2. Okay, cool. Yep. PS2, <clears throat> it is then. Um, and then I think the Super Play. Were the Super Plays uh, for the PS2 version also on the PS2 version? The Super Plays were on the arcade version. Okay. And then we are going to look at KTL Nails uh, or NAL's uh, Agiha run after Icarus's. Mm -hmm. So that's what we got going on here. Yeah. Um, Maximo, do you have any uh, thoughts or things to say? Otherwise, we'll just jump right in. Um. I don't have much, too much to say. Okay. Like, I don't have much experience with this game outside of playing a couple of credits for, like, Attorney and then getting to, like, Vive 2, I think. It's been a long time. Cool. All right, well, let's uh, let's get into it, shall we? And we'll let uh, Icarus take the range for the most part, and uh, myself and Maxim will try to chime in and make sense of what's going on. I've, I played it a decent bit myself. I, I don't recall if I've even cleared it, but I do like the game, and I really like I like Ludo 2 more, personally, but... Aside from that, uh, let's get into this run. We're going to do a th uh, on go, three, two, one, go countdown here, and we're all going to watch the video together. So let us do that. Are we, we all ready? From zero. Yeah, from zero. Cool. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's get into it. Three, okay. two, one, go. Ah, thankfully, there's a few seconds of startup on this replay, so that's fine. <laughs> But yeah, um, I think most people who've played Gluda will already know about the Kakuze system where you shoot enemies, get green gems, you use green gems to start slowing the screen down. There's a couple of systems, as I mentioned before, that are intertwined though. So the Kakuse system is obviously your slowdown system. What it actually does is it slows down enemy bullets, but it also speeds up their, uh, their firing interval as well. Um, you'll see this like more most obviously with like small enemies like tanks and things where they start shooting a huge line of bullets. Uh, basically, when you use Kakuse system, it basically removes the interval between each bullet pattern being fired from an enemy, so you get loads more bullets and more bullets on screen that are slower. But as I mentioned before as well, there's also Kakuse over mode as well, which is the, the rank system in this game. To actually trigger um, over mode, you actually need zero green gems and then switch into Kakuse, and that's when the bullets turn red rather than purple. Um, and they actually start moving faster. Um, but what happens there is that you get this little gauge around your character and that starts to fill up. Um, once that's filled up, they'll uh, give you another gauge and then another one after that. You can see it here. Mm -hmm. What that does is that actually increases the rank of the game. So more bullets fired. Um, bullets fired much faster from enemies as well. And you also get more Kakuse gems out of enemies when you kill them. Um, so you kind of want to try and get your rank up to um, level 3 as soon as possible. The actual optimal strat is to actually get level 1 on the mid-boss, which is what I did there. And then when you get to the boss itself, you get level 3 after that. Um, but outside of that, most of the routing here is just killing like enemies as close to the top of the screen as possible in order to get as many green gems as possible and then using them in big chunks of stage, like um, you know, killing larger large groups of enemies. You actually want to focus on medium-sized enemies and large enemies with Kakuse though, because they're worth the most. <laughs> okay. Small, small enemies tend not to be worth anything, plus they also remove a huge chunk of gold gems if you kill them anyway, so you want to try and use right. small enemies to get green gems, but you want to use medium and large enemies to get gold. <clears throat> gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. First boss here. So Yep, so the first boss here, I'm still at level 1 over mode, but I'm going to try and use Kakuse here to cancel a specific pattern there. And then you can see these gauges, the circular ones. This is level 2 Kakuse, and it's just filling up here. It actually mm -hmm. fills up faster if you don't shoot, so that's why I'm not shooting currently. Oh, nice. And then once I fill up all three, then I'm at maximum rank, and that way I can actually score more consistently and get more points as well. Such um, an interesting mechanic because it's like the new players aren't going to bother with that so the game's going to be easier and more approachable like so smart man so smart exactly yeah what's interesting as well is that in esp galuda 2 they actually made over mode permanent so you still have over mode level one two and three and it's still acquired the same way but in esp galuda 1 if you take a hit your over mode resets back to zero and you have to build it up again 
And that's what makes playing Galuda 1 slightly more difficult than it should be. Because if you take a hit, you have to not only recover your route and your resources, but also your over mode as well if you want to play it consistently. Um, yeah. Usually when I'm practicing and if people watch me practice this game, they'll see me doing like some recovery strats here and there on like specific bosses and mid bosses and things. But uh, ideally you don't want to be recovering at all. You want to basically you no know, miss for the uh, highest possible point gain to miss. Which is easier said than done, to be honest, because there's a, there's a lot going on in this game. A lot more when it's played for score. Did you carry mm. over the gold from the, the first stage? I didn't notice. Yes, you... gold okay. and green gems carry over. All your resources nice. carry over first stages. So in stage one, you want to try and get as close to a thousand gold as possible. It's possible to get a thousand gold from the stage itself, and then you just carry that into the rest of the game after this. Yeah, so you just build the gold up with the gem, so you're at a thousand, and then that's then you can really start get cracking on the bulk of your scoring, yeah. right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Also, when you're canceling bullets with Kakuse, you want to try and leave as many bullets on screen as possible because the bullets actually convert into medals, and their like their base value is multiplied by the multiplier on screen so all the bullets like they get cancelled and however many cancel is your multiplier so say for example you kill an enemy and it's five like 80 bullets you get a up to a times 80 multiplier and then the next enemy will add to that up until a maximum of times 100 but basically you want to try and get to 100 times multiplier within Kakuse as quickly as possible and then just cancel as slowly as possible so that you've got a lot of bullets on screen to get a lot of gold from because that's where your residual score comes from as well. Mm. Um, the multiplier does affect the enemy, the value of the enemies as well. Um, but ideally you want to try and get to times 100 as quickly as possible, which is why you're seeing me generate a lot of gems and then using a huge amount of gems in specific sections for scoring. <clears throat> oh, we have a... I think there was something mentioned in chat about with short bursts is just tapping on a fire dip, which is button four. Because I think, if I'm not mistaken, the arcade version, there's a button just dedicated to shot auto, and then you could actually. I have tried that actually, funny enough. And when you tap auto fire, you actually fire three or four bursts rather than one. It's actually more prevalent if you watch um, Clover Tax replay on the DVD. Like at the beginning of stage two, there's a group of tanks on the left side of the screen after the first medium-sized enemy. He uses very, very light, like, um, shot auto fire, so you only fire, like, one burst, and it, like, picks off specific tanks. If you try it on PS2 or even Arcade, and I've tried it before, you fire, like, three or four bursts instead. It's kind of weird, and I'm not sure. Like I said before, I've tried to research it, and I've never been able to find any kind of information on it. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> Stage 2 boss. This one is actually quite tricky to score on. I think it's primarily the last phase, um, which you'll see in a bit. Um, the, it spawns a lot of discs. The problem is, is that those discs are technically classed as enemies, so if you kill them with Kakuse, it depletes your gems, mm. um, which makes it slightly harder to kill like in Kakuse. Yeah, these discs here. So you, you kind of want to bring it down like low enough and then create a gap so that yeah. you can actually kill the boss with your Kakuse shot without destroying a disc. I don't quite get it there because I was like sort of uh, uncomfortable with the, the positioning, but you can actually get to a, the full multiplier there. Mm. Um, but yeah. 11.9 is actually quite good in here. I think my highest is like 12.1, 12.2. Um, so about 10.5 huh. to 11 is pretty good at this point. Yeah, and then mm. that means you're about PB pace yeah. at that point. Yeah, um, stage three is pretty fun though. This is technically the, I think it's the second highest scoring stage in the game. Mm -hmm. um, you can get over 10 million points in this stage with some very, very good routing. Um, this is pretty much my favorite stage as well because uh, it's actually quite technical with the routing. You've got a lot of trains here and there. You've got a lot of medium-sized enemies. Uh, you're constantly looking for like um, good groups to actually destroy. And you can actually be quite... Um, experimental with what you uh, target here. You don't have to go with the, the trains and enemies that I do, but uh, hmm. this rod I think is probably the most comfortable I've found. And it's actually pretty good fun to do as well. <clears throat> right, the multiple cancels from the yeah. bullets overlapping and the cars and good, those yeah. 
many enemies. Yes. I take it the trains are like the highest value target here? Yes, they are, yeah. They're also probably the uh, enemies that spawn the most bullets as well. So you want to destroy yeah. specific carriages in order to get like lots of bullet counters is what I'm doing here. Yeah, so I've got the extend already at this point, which is actually quite nice. You usually get the extend at the mid boss if you're, you're uh, not too sharp on the, the route here. But the, the mid boss is actually worth quite a lot as well, actually. <laughs> right, and isn't that also too more an arcade, like the P2 getting more gems or more spawns yeah. also shows its head? Yeah, yeah. So again, with the PS2 version, um, playing on PS2 is primarily just aesthetic, but uh, it's uh, something uh, more of a habit for me. But yeah, this mid boss um, on the arcade version, it spawns way more of these mines, like about this much and oh. this much bullet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So these mines on the arcade version, you get way more of them and uh, Interesting. More bullets on P2. On P1, you get like half as much. Oh, it affects the mines, the P2 thing? Yes, it does. Oh, weird. Instead, the PS2 version, they fixed it so that player one and player two get the the relative amount that an arcade player two would get. Um, but I play a player two just because it's what I'm used to, and uh, I'm used to seeing where the gauges are <laughs> on the yeah. right side, so it's more comfortable this way. <clears throat> yeah, so at this point here, this is one of the biggest sections of the game. You actually want to get up to maximum green gems here, which is 500, and then use the whole lot on this pretty big cluster of enemies which have like lots of bullets here it's mm. quite nice this little chaining section probably one of the more fun parts of it here like this giant battleship has lots of big sections with lots of really good scoring but it's also quite technical as well because you need to leave certain enemies alive for a bit longer mm. you need to time how you kill things as well for the maximum point gain right <laughs> I think the, one of the most difficult section on, uh, sections on this stage is coming up here. You've got uh, a couple of these medium-sized enemies, these ones here, and then lots of waves coming from the corners. And it's actually quite tricky to do this particular scoring pattern here, where you're actually killing like uh, these medium-sized enemies for this optimal like, section here. Then you're picking up a Zekko and then killing that one. That is actually quite difficult to do, and sometimes I end up accidentally killing that thing on the the right side too early and using quite a lot of mm -hmm. points. And this bit here as well is quite tricky. That's, there's a very specific movement pattern I take here in order to get through this um, this attack here because the tank's patterns are actually static, but then you've got all those aim bullets as well, so you're trying to like misdirect everything in order to get through. Right, yeah, you're making a gap to cut through. Yep. Mm. And then you've got the extend here, so you can actually just ignore all of this if you're just playing for survival, but uh, uh, work in a little bit of the scoring for this extend as well. <laughs> yeah, so you used uh, Coxay to reveal the extend there on the background, where like the, those, little, pretty, those yeah. little indentation gem looking thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't uncover that without Kakase, which is why you want to try and acquire as many um, gems as possible up to that point. The same with the boss as well, you uh, need at least 450 for the full scoring here. Because okay. uh, on the second phase, we're going to be doing a little bit of milking. And the milking is quite lucrative because each each cycle of the phase is worth a million points each. So it's quite nice to actually score from this. <laughs> but here, these little drones here, you want to mm. try and pick off about <laughs> eight of them per phase. <laughs> um, and it's a bit easier with Tadha because her Akasei shot pierces through enemies. So you can actually just use it to um, sweep but then you've got a basically no shot through this and it's kind of awkward sometimes. You can actually get walled in quite easily here. Um, and you've got to do this loop three times in a row. <laughs> yeah, as James said, it's way harder to do this with Pagaha, <laughs> funny enough. One of the things that Tadha actually makes a lot easier in this one. Also wanted to uh, bring up, like you get more gems for using uh, the, um, the focus shot. Isn't that right? No, or, no, I don't think so. No, you do. Uh, if you're referring to, if you're referring to green gems, no, you actually get more gems for killing stuff at the top of the screen. Just the top, using okay. Focus shot, yeah, using focus shot and standard shot doesn't like have any difference when it comes to gem acquisition. Okay, maybe that was a thing in Galuda too. I thought it maybe. I maybe. think so. Now yeah. in Galuda two, it was um, point blank. 
So the closer you are to enemies, the more gems you get from them. Okay. <laughs> Mm. Final phase, just to kill. But you can actually use this final phase to recover over mode if you've been hit before. That's probably the only safe place in this run where you can recover over mode 3. Most of the time you're like kind of stuck. There's no real good recovery points after that. Mm. <clears throat> Stage 4 is slightly lower to score in, but it's probably the more technical of the, uh, the stages. Uh, this the routing in this is actually quite strict because you've got to deal with these uh, medium-sized enemies. That was a mistake. Um, you got to deal with these medium-sized enemies, and you have to be um, very precise with how you actually pick them off with Kakuse. Um, I think I've seen around about 11 million taken out of this, but um, I'm nowhere near that good on this stage. I think my highest is like 8.9, 9 million, something like that. And the uh, routing a lot of this was actually quite tricky because these medium-sized enemies, the ones with the spread guns, you can see that they cover the screen. Um, and while the pattern is aimed, if you're not in the right position, you'll be blocked in very quickly. So you have to be very careful where you're moving at all Sounds times. Like some stage. macro, micro dodge in there. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that with this stage because you're trying to route in those medium-sized bombers and it's really, really difficult, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> I love. The, I always love the bullet patterns in these uh, Raid and Galuda games. They're some of the best, I think. Yeah, the bullet patterns in this are really nice to play, play around in as well. Like, especially when you're like doing little micro dodges like that, well, there, or like macro macro dodging around as well. well. It's actually really yeah. good fun to learn this one. Galuda 2 <laughs> went a little insane with the difficulty in bullet patterns, but I still like the. Yeah, I like them here too. <laughs> Yeah, I love the Luda too. I think it's a great game. I just think it's not as easy to get into, unfortunately, because at least if you're playing survival, it is. But if you're playing for score, you've got to worry not only about Kakuse, but also Zeshikai. Yeah. Kakuse as well. Way mm. harder to actually learn. <laughs> yeah, so you want to speed kill the mid boss there because you actually get a couple of extra bombers here for oh, better nice. scoring. These two actually are extra. So that actually happens quite a few times in this game. There's like specific mid bosses you want to speed kill so that you get more enemies later on. You oh. saw me do that on stage two with the mid boss using guard barrier twice um, yeah. in order to kill it. So you got like a bunch of additional enemies for Kakase gems. And then in this stage, you saw me getting it again. So I can actually get a couple of extra enemies for score in this case. Right, yeah. So guard barrier is not just a bomb, it's like a chargeable super attack. So, yeah. yeah, pretty nice. Yeah, I mean, as I mentioned before as well, you can, the uh, beginners will use guard barrier primarily as a defense. It's technically a bomb, but um, if you're playing for score, you're actually using it to speed kill stuff so you can actually get more score, you know? So there's a lot of places where I use guard barrier primarily as a scoring um, technique instead. Does this have the Coxe uh, guard barrier auto activation? It's a mechanic? Yes. Okay, yeah. So if you have it on and you get hit, it just spends uh, half your, half or the remaining of your bar, I think? Yep, or, it spends up or, to half of your bar, but uh, it only mm -hmm. activates if you're in Kakuse. Right. So if you get hit outside of Kakuse, it's an instant death. Uh, but if you get hit within Kakuse, then uh, it spends basically up to 50% of your bar. Do you get any like iframes when you're uh, transforming to Kakuse mode or anything like that? Nope. Yeah, okay. Wondering about that. Otherwise, that would be quite abusable. <laughs> but yeah, there's no, yeah. Uh, no uh, invincibility when you switch. Hmm. <clears throat> mm, train boss. This boss is actually fairly straightforward. So, like, uh, I think scoring is done on the first and third form. Um, but you actually want to kill the second form as quickly as possible, which um, you'll probably see in a minute. I'll mm. actually be in over mode four instead for the additional um, attack power. Flying over the boss is cool. Yeah, there's an actual little gap there which um, I like to exploit, especially since Tata has like the slower of the two characters, so you kind of need to be up there quickly. So I use that little gap to get through that bullet pattern so that I'm in the right position a lot earlier. And then get through that. Sometimes those discs can actually ram you, so you do need to be careful. It's happened quite a few times in some of my practice runs, unfortunately. <clears throat> Yeah, it's not obvious you can fly over the boss, so it's nice that you show that off here. Yeah. Uh, that's the cancel. And here, you actually want to cycle this form as quickly as possible, which is why I'm in mm -hmm. over mode for this, because I'm actually using um, over mode shot, which is 
like her most powerful attack. Oh yeah, you do more damage in over mode. Yeah. The other thing as well is that being in over mode means the bullets are faster, which means that the bullets aren't on screen for that long, which makes them easier to avoid as well, funny enough. Mm -hmm. And then this phase here is actually quite tricky, but if you use a like tap dodging, you can actually misdirect the aim shots. And then you want to cancel this phase just after the, the little voice clip happens. And that usually is pretty consistent for that one. I suppose with like the micro dodging there uh, could bring up what the hitbox is for the characters. Yeah, I think the hitbox is like this little, I think it's two by two, two by four, somewhere in the center. I'm not sure exactly how big it is, but uh, like, uh, isn't it, it like it underneath the neck a little bit? Yeah, uh, yeah, underneath the neck's like center of torso. It's uh, pretty much typical cave size though. So yeah, <laughs> but unlike a lot of cave games that came after, I think you don't actually get to see the hitbox. So. You kind of need to know where it is if you're trying to micro dodge. But you see, in this like, game, yeah, they have like the character sprites. Like something about them will make it a good cue, like the hair, or the yeah, color exactly. of the back of their shirt and stuff. So, yeah, you can usually get a, a pretty good um, visual indicator for the hitbox. Like it looks like she has a red, bit of red, brighter red on the back, so you can just use yeah. that. Yeah, like that. <clears throat> the stage is uh, quite rough, actually. Uh, like one of the most difficult stages for scoring this one. I actually, I think the it's the second half that's the most difficult. What I tend to affectionately call turret alley. It's basically a massive section with loads and loads of turrets and lots of uh, drones that just fly around on screen and shoot aim bullets at you. It's like one of the most difficult sections in the game coming up after this. And I actually had to route it as well because back um, when I was first learning this, I didn't actually have a proper route for this. So I used to get hit here and quite often, but I'm actually following a very strict route now for this, um, both for scoring and for survival, because uh, trying to get that energy as well is kind of inconsistent without mm. the route, because it has a tendency to go flying off the screen if you're not quick enough for it. So yeah, I'm actually following a, like a route here to try and pick off these turrets and deal with the drones. Um, oh, that was a tight dodge. Yeah, this is quite <laughs> kind of scary, this bit. <laughs> and then there we go, nice. <laughs> And then you've got a huge group of soldiers right at the end here. You actually want to keep a few Kakuse gems here just so you can actually get some more points off these guys. Tap dodge because you'll, they'll always miss as long as you're moving. Okay. Then we've got Cessary. Uh, she comes back from the first stage and she's not very mm. happy with you, for obvious reasons. <laughs> so you can misdirect her first pattern here because I think it's partially aimed. So I start off on the right side and then move to the left. And you can see I've actually got slightly bigger gaps here, which I can move through as well. Um, yeah. She does this red wave and then this orb, which you actually score from. It's actually quite tricky because there's no um, energy bar for the orb. So you kind of need to know how much damage you've done to it um, as you're orbiting oh, it, because okay. you want to try and kill it when it starts um, switching the bullets back around. So it's, you know, you can see it's shooting clockwise at the moment and it stops like now and then shoots anti-clockwise. Oh, nice. That's when you need to cancel it. And then this pattern is actually quite scary as well because it speeds up, but the gap gets much smaller as it speeds up. Mm. You kind of want to be um, away from the center of the screen, like starting to move away from the center of the screen so that the, the gap is bigger as you're tapping through that. I actually think I take a hit here. Yeah, that's that's oh. the stupid mistake. <laughs> Barely that's <laughs> Yeah, that's a really dumb mistake there because uh, I don't normally die to that phase, but uh, yeah. Unfortunately, that actually cost me quite a lot of points. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you could cut your gold in half, or more than half. Or cut the gold in half. half. Rank yeah. is now back to zero as well, which means I'm not going to be getting as many bullets from enemies in this section. Uh, which means that my score potential is now way lower here. And you kind of want to be at maximum rank uh, with a decent amount of resources for this particular mm. part of stage six with all the Alice clones. Because you cash all of this in like much later on when you've got a huge group of them and it's worth a, a pretty stupid amount. I think it's around about four or five million just from that section alone. And unfortunately, I can't yeah. this good yet. Oops. Mm. Yep, oops. <laughs> so I oh. estimated when I first released the replay that I actually lost about two, two and a half million total. Dang, yeah. And this score would have been 61, 62-ish. 
without that miss. Dang. Uh, yeah. Quick question about the uh, mid boss when it has like the robot spawn or whatever. Um, does that respawn? It does. Okay. Yes. It it respawns constantly, but uh, I think the amount of uh, damage you're doing to it, you'll you probably get about two loops out of it maximum. I only ever do one loop though because I think it's just safer that way. You can probably okay. get like another loop out and maybe another few hundred thousand if you're going for maximal scoring, but it gets pretty scary after that because you've got to deal with some of the, the nastier attack patterns that she has. <laughs> okay. Coming up to the last boss now. <clears throat> Some good slowdown back there. Yep, just had to get there. <clears throat> Got full power, which is kind of what you need here, and almost full barrier as well. So, Jacko. So this is the first part of the last boss, just him in the capsule. Um, you can actually destroy the wings on left and right. There's two sets of them. Um, I think I've seen, like, on Super Players, to actually... I could say, like, uh, two of the four wings, but I actually only go for one of the four just for safety. <coughs> so that's another improvement that could be done in the future if it needed to be. Um, but I find this way to be a little bit safer for me, because what you do is you actually drain the boss's health until it's, like, nearly, like, up to the next phase. And then when you actually destroy the, f the, the final wing, it actually phases immediately into the next um, attack pattern. But if you bring it down as low as you can, then you're actually starting at the right place rather than too early. Um, this bit's all tap dodging though. I think you can actually go into over mode in this if you want to speed the bullets up, but I think it's a little bit scary that way. Because <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> you see how fast it's coming and the gaps are actually quite... Well, uh, well it looks like your through. shot in over mode is actually making the slowdown, so that's kind of... That it is. Good. But then I have to barrier through that, unfortunately. But uh, thankfully, I actually barried it, barrier just in time because if you order barrier, you actually lose a percentage of gold as well. Mm. Kind of oh, one. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, so order barrier actually loses some gold as well. I think it's like 25, 30%, something like that. <clears throat> so if you That's get hit, lot. you lose a But if you order barrier, you lose just a chunk. Hmm, final boss time. <clears throat> <clears throat> I always thought this boss music was pretty kick-ass. Yeah, the boss music's pretty cool. <laughs> boss is pretty scary, though, I find, for, especially if you're playing for score. Like, uh, you've got to actually deal with very specific waves. Like, the first wave you play for score, this one is really hard. I don't know quite how you do this one just yet, so I just barrier my way through it just to get it out the way. <laughs> yeah, and you barriered there, so you had a sliver left so you could do another barrier. That's a little trick. Yeah, a little trick you can do is you can barrier until you've got like a pixel left and that way you can still yeah. barrier. Um, which is exactly what I do on the stage 2 mid boss actually. You can see when you uh, when you watch the stage 2 boss, um, like done for score, a lot of players will use up almost all of their barrier except a pixel to kill the first phase and then use a, the remaining pixel to damage the second phase. Uh, it's a little trick you can do. You don't have to completely drain your guard barrier. And leave just small amounts of it if you need to use it in an emergency. Almost done with this though. This phase is actually quite tricky because you get little traps here and there. And actually, no, I didn't get it for score, so unfortunately I lost some points there as well. That's cool, you see the boss grabbing gems there? I don't think you ever noticed that. Yeah, <laughs> so Deco actually uses gems to transform into Kakase form. Um, That's sweet. Four bars. Yeah, there's four bars in there. They're not too annoying to deal with. I think the second phase is probably the, the scariest one to do, like normally. You get this one for score, so if you've got enough Kakase, you can just... Well, I didn't bother in this case. <laughs> Keeping the gems for safety. <laughs> so I'm actually losing some points here. I think, like I said, I think uh, I dropped quite mm. a fair bit. I was actually trying to... Uh, be at the boss as quickly as possible because you gotta close the deal points. right <laughs> yeah well your end game bonus is actually pretty big okay if I remember correctly so I actually forget what the full calculation is but you get points for the amount of life containers you have <laughs> the amount of lives you have how much gold you have and how much guard barrier you have and it's up to I think 10 12 million in end of game bonus wow um, that's a lot yeah I so think I'm I remember trying to actually, 
Yeah, yeah so I'm trying to kill the boss like as quickly as possible, so I've actually got as much resources as possible. Mm. I do go for this one though, because that's worth quite a lot. And then the final phase is actually a lot simpler now that I know how to do it. Because um, interestingly enough, there's only two static patterns for this. Um, okay. And you can actually determine which static patterns are by what side the bullets, uh, which side um, of the screen the bullets start to go up on. So you can see the two gems on the, the two rows of gems on the side there. They shoot bullets straight across and then they'll alternate up and down. Whichever side goes up, um, you can tell like which pattern you need to use. So if like say the right side goes up first, you want to be on the right side for most of it. If the left side goes up first, you want to be on the left side for most of it. And nice. most of it it's just basically, you know, sweeping through the, the lines of the bullets there and stepping through the ones that reflect off the top of the screen. Yeah, they didn't look too bad when you did it like that. Yeah, yes. it's actually quite easy to learn, but like I mentioned before, I actually had to spend an evening trying to figure it out. And uh, once I actually figured out like the right places to sit for it, I think it's a lot easier to, to know miss that pattern without barrier. Um, I find now, actually, find the pattern before that scarier because there's a lot of, you know, fan waves and traps and winders and things like that. So it's like pretty, pretty scary, that one. But uh, that was a good run, but... I think there's a lot of improvements I can do in there that I know of, like obviously not dying to Cessary is the first one. And then there's a right. couple of um, kills on uh, Jacko's uh, second form that I can do as well. So in the future, I would like to come back to this and maybe go for 62 at least. Yeah. Um, Jabber has also posted from the Shmups wiki, there's a breakdown of yeah. end game bonus, the lives remaining. Yeah. So. Max end game bonus, 11.6 million. Yeah, it's like, a lot of points. Chunky. <laughs> it's a huge <laughs> amount. So that's why I wanted to try and get through it as quickly as possible, because I have, what, six containers, five lives, and that's already quite a lot of points to begin with. Mm -hmm. So getting through the, the last boss with no miss is probably the best that I could have done in this one. I would have preferred not to have died at all throughout the run, but uh, you know that's always something you can improve yeah. on in the future, isn't it? Mm -hmm. 2003 developer by K if it's so jank. <laughs> <laughs> Ty a typo on the last like text. Of course. There has to be a typo <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it won't be a K game about now. Yeah. <clears throat> that was good, good run though, yeah. I, I, think, I liked I liked watching that. I think everyone did. And you got some we got some GG's mm, going on. Yeah, it's, it was a good run. Like I said, I think there's obvious things that I can improve on, but uh, it's a lot of it is just execution now, I think. Um, but uh, the thing about, you know, good score runs is you end up being quite nervous as you go through it. And I think when I died at Cessary, I was already thinking this is actually a pretty good run. And then I took that hit and I was like, oh. Yeah, it's always, <laughs> that's always how it is. <laughs> Yeah, you that's can't celebrate. How it is. You can't celebrate at all mentally until it's time. Yeah. Until it's time to celebrate. Yeah, or whatever. Ugh. we've all. We, everyone's them. been there, I'm sure. Um, I mean, if it happens, unfortunately, it happens. You just gotta pretend that you're always just practicing or something, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think I don't think we actually talk that much about you know nerves when we're playing because you know we do have a lot of very high level players, and I'm quite certain that. You know, um, some element of nerves do play into it, at least for you know those kinds of players. I know for a fact in my case, when I'm yeah. actually on a really good run, I do end up getting quite nervous a lot, and I think this run was impacted by that because mm. that was actually a really good run up until that point when I got hit by accessory because I was already like a million and a half ahead of PB. <laughs> for sure. And I was like, yeah. this is going to be pretty good. And then as soon as that happened, I was like, Shh. so yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Stress. At least the game isn't an hour and twenty minutes long, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've been there and done that, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> been there, done yeah. that. It's I know rough. the uh, I know this the pain is... and suffering of playing ninety minute runs. <clears throat> um, yeah, but uh, you know, glued is nice, and that's like a nice. This is like a nice, like 25, 30 minute game, so. Or yeah, it's about 30, yeah, 30 minutes long. Like if you're playing it for score, it's half an hour long, but it's actually quite okay. a comfortable half an hour. Yeah, that's, so you're that's not nice. like always stressed out when you're doing it. 
So we do have another replay. We're going to watch an Ageha run. This was the super play that's included on the PS2 version of the game. And uh, I do believe you personally ripped this replay as well yourself. Anchors. Yes, I did. So the one good. that was on YouTube originally was pretty low quality. So I ripped it so that <laughs> I had access to a higher quality. Yeah, that's cool. Very good. It's cool. Yeah. Um, so we're going to watch another replay here. Um, anything to preface the run before we jump in? Otherwise, we'll just go in pretty quick here and uh, shoot the shit. We're Agaha, aren't we? Yeah. 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 So Agaha, as we mentioned before, is probably the more challenging of the two to actually play a score like, consistently because you actually need a, a much tighter route for Kakusei gem acquisition. But the actual score route is not too dissimilar to you know what you would see for a high-level Tadaha run. So a lot of the routing is going to be largely similar um, yeah so i'd say yeah when we're doing this run yeah if anyone has lingering questions we'll probably shoot the shit a little bit more here but yeah yeah you know cool. um i'll we'll let you take the reins of course again on this uh see and see what you think and whatnot but uh of course it is going to be a higher scoring run and by ktl now yeah. do you know do you know anything about this player now now has been around for a long time. I can't remember what the last thing like uh, what he used to play, but I definitely know he's been, you know, in the uh, um, the Japanese yeah. shmups community for quite nice. a long time. Held quite a lot of replays. Uh, Wasn't like, he the guy who had the Type B world record for DDP? At yeah, seven hundred four million or something like that. Same player, yeah. He's quite well known. Actually, he's one of the old gods of shoot'em ups. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's like playing during the 90s and then also in like Virtua Fighter when that was like new. Yeah. Plasma says that his last game was Salamander 2, which is a very interesting score game, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but is yeah, it, is it so, really? Yeah, it, is, it is actually quite entertaining, but we'll probably talk about that next time. <clears throat> very okay. fun score for that one. Cool. Um, we do have it. Uh, I do have it queued up here. Are we ready to go from zero? Is it zero? Oh, wait, no, okay. shit, it wasn't no, zero. No, it's 3105. Sorry. My bad, I did That's have true. it. My bad, let me yeah. reload it. <laughs> For it's a habit, mm -hmm. zero, the zero habit. 3105, yeah, let me get back there again here. Uh, wishy wishy. Uh, in a range mode, the aspirate bubble shot, yeah, but also the scoring is slightly different. Like uh, the multiplier maxes out at times 64. Um, you can also acquire Kakase gems by using guard barrier as well. Um, and obviously, the amount of bullets on screen is way different. <laughs> it's, as I've, I was talking about a range with the guys before the stream, and I basically called it um, ESP Galuda Ultra. That's kind of how you want to approach it. It's like pretty. Pretty insane difficulty increase in that version. Also, no continuous or practice options, as Baff said, which is the un only unfortunate thing about the arranged mode on PS2. Yeah, yeah, what the hell, man? Yeah, it's, Don't it's they want a, us to play it more? Or, and, and classic Arika. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Always including really difficult modes, just to be like, let's see how good you can, you know. Yeah. Because I think Death Label doesn't have practice either, right? DOJ Death Label. I don't think so. Like, I yeah. think one of the main difficulties is, like, you get to, like, second loop, and you just have to, like, do four runs each time and just know how to do it. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> that's an Eureka thing, then. Not sticking a practice mode in there. Insane difficulty arrange modes. <laughs> yeah. They, they probably thought you're too spoiled, you know, having a home port, you know. <laughs> I think Nihar in general just seems like a really hardcore player from like some of the tweets he comes out with. Mm. I don't know. Oh, Mihara, you said? Yeah, yeah. the president of Erika. Yeah, oh yeah. TGM, like, dude. All right, let's get into this replay then. From 3105, <laughs> uh, I'll count us down. Three, two, one, go. Ah, <clears throat> yep, as before, they're playing on player two side. This is actually on the arcade version, so they have to play on player two side if they want to play the score. Yeah. But Agaha, as you can see, has this variable direction shot, which is very similar to um, Type B and Dodon Pachi, the helicopter. 
um, which I think actually kind of makes them slightly harder to play. Uh, you do have like basically pseudo wide, but you kind of need to fly around the screen a hell of a lot more in order to um, consistently pick up the right amount of green gems. Mm. Which is why I tend not to play as him that much, but uh, his attacks are way stronger. And he also benefits from the fact that his um, Kakase shot is non-piercing, which means you can just tap to pick off tanks like you do here. Something that Tadaha unfortunately cannot do. Um, with Tadaha, Kakase's shot is piercing, so it makes it a lot harder to, uh, to score on. Oh yeah, and we saw, yeah. if you were paying attention, yeah, there was like a, that graphic glitch too that happens on the PCB, where it's like yep. black and gray, like TV static, looks crazy. Yeah, you get that with particularly juicy cancels, which is always great when you're playing on the PCB, because at least you know you're scoring properly when that happens. I forgot about it's that, it looks cool though. It is really, really nice. Like it happens when you get some huge, like another one there. Oh yeah, like, nice. All that... the screens just completely it's like, uh, yeah. yeah, that looks sweet. It, it, yeah, I dig it. It, it, it kind of seems like it fits somehow. Yeah, exactly. So probably didn't quite catch it there as well, but um, uh, Nal actually did the same technique for the mid boss where you guard barrier the the mid boss to weaken the arms. And then use a, a combination of Kakase and Kakase Overmode in order to get to level one and score on the mid boss. So he's at level one overmode at the moment still at this point. And he's gonna try and max out to level three on the boss. And um, similar pattern as well here, he's gonna just uh, nuke down the first um, form and then kill it with Kakase and then charge overmode straight afterwards. <laughs> I think does he go for the same pattern? I can't remember. I think he actually goes for the next one, doesn't he? The thing as well is that your gold is ticking down here, so you actually want to kill the, the bosses fast as well. <laughs> Big glitch. And then, yeah, he starts charging over mode two here. You can see the gauges around the character here, how they start filling up. So you should be in maximum rank. You can even see as well in over mode the, the effect of rank, how the bullets start to speed up as well. Um, it's a, it's a little um, mechanic that I think a lot of people don't actually realize when they start out on this game is that you can actually, you know, increase rank in order to score better. I suppose uh, eventually you'd play the game enough, you'd just, you'd see the dial there and be wondering, oh, what's that? And then eventually you'd probably yeah. notice that the bullets go faster. Yeah. And that type of yeah. thing. I don't know, maybe they don't mention that on the arcade marquee at all. Maybe yeah, I don't do. think they mentioned it in the marquee, but I think they do. Uh, did they mention it in the tutorial? I can't remember. <laughs> don't Maybe, really pay yeah. attention to it. There's like the tutorial, it. yeah. Yeah, I think they, they might do, I can't remember. But uh, it's, certainly it's something that you don't normally pay attention to at the beginning. Um, but as you mentioned before, it's, it's a nice little mechanic to actually um, start to improve with because you can add it into your runs if you need to learn from there. I just love that, yeah, the hard difficulty is kind of just behind that barrier. Like, it's just, it's, uh... Yeah, so it's smart. not in your face immediately. It actually gives you the option to engage with it if you want to. Such smart, yeah. such smart design. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, so he's following largely the same route here, targeting large enemies for big cancels here. <laughs> Does Agatha end up being better scoring than Tateha, or is it just a matter of like where the routing and execution? The thing with ESP Galuda is that the scores for both characters are equivalent. So the, the world oh, okay. record scores are almost identical. Interesting. Like 72, 73 million. Um, that is pretty close. The main, yeah, I think the main difference, as I mentioned before, is just the execution of those routes. Tadaha is considerably more challenging to score in because of the way her Kakase mm. attacks work. Um, whereas Agaha, like all of his Kakase attacks are non-piercing, which means that, uh, well, uh, the one that you use for score, the shot, is non-piercing, so it's actually a lot easier for him to score with. <clears throat> yeah. So again, so again, the guard barrier the first phase, and then guard barrier the second, speed kill it. Nice. <laughs> and then you should get an extra two or three sets of enemies coming up here, these little, like, uh, flying bomber enemies here. Mm. That actually gives you a lot more green gems. Was that the good scoring pattern, asks Jamers? Yes, that was. Yeah, the mid boss yeah. is extremely annoying because it has three attack patterns it starts off with. Two of them are absolutely awful for score. <laughs> uh, One of them. I remember you bitching about one. that. Yeah, I complained about it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I complain about it a lot, unfortunately, because it it does impact your score a lot. Like in it, it, it's around about like two, three hundred thousand or something. The difference between the really good pattern and it's kind the of a lot. Second pattern, it's a lot. Yeah, it's horrible. So if you don't get good RNG, then your scoring is slightly impacted. Unfortunately, you can make it up elsewhere though. But uh, it's just annoying to have like. Uh, your score potential affected by randomness. What's the it's world record like now? Do you, do you know, like, compared to when this came out? I think the world records are like 73, 74, something like that. I haven't it's checked not, for a while okay. yet. Pretty but small I, difference. I don't think they've been massively improved on, because I don't think the uh, there's a huge amount left in this game to actually get in terms uh, of score. Yeah, it's 73.6 million with... Yeah. Um, Wow. Ageha, and then Tatea 72.5 million and the Tatea world record is from it looks like Arcadia February 2006 whereas Ageha was updated in November 2023 crazy yeah. so yeah it's, like I said the, with this game scoring being not really like massive it gets optimized like a lot faster than most of the cave games do <laughs> Unless like someone's found this crazy route which gives you even more points than normal, I don't think we'll be seeing like huge changes in like the score potential um, after this. But there's always like that tiny little bits, right? You can yeah try to beat the old record for. <laughs> yeah, there's little optimizations you can make here and there in order to improve it for there. Yeah, I don't think it'll be gigantic chunks of score. <laughs> like we're accustomed to seeing people make or like uh i know like games well it's like didn't kiwi get the mushy maniac record yeah and he like, did and like yeah like i thought that was nuts already like with the super players and such a robust yeah. scoring system in comparison with like all the different tapping and all the crazy yeah, stuff I mean, going on I think that's the thing about a lot of cave scoring systems compared to this one is that they do have like a lot of like the ceiling is a lot higher for a lot of those games because the scoring calculation is like much bigger like this one being in like the, the tens of millions you don't really have a huge amount of uh, optimization to make outside of maybe coming up with some crazy routing that might actually get you know an extra enemy here and there or whatever yeah and uh, where with some other games like you can make like an improvement of like tens of millions just by changing one or two things. So yeah, I think which might end up being like in... way harder and way riskier or something too. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of so nice that not sure. it's not super crazy in the, in that regard because then it's like people can actually kind of push for those higher ceilings, perhaps. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> I mean, it'd be nice to see if, you know, someone goes for the 75, but I personally don't see it being possible to even get that far, because I don't think the, the amount of points is in it. There's not that many points in it, rather. Not without crazy routing. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I know all record, <laughs> hundreds of points. Yeah, I mean, so you still... Again. You do still see some of those world records going down, but like, yeah, the, the changes are minuscule compared to some games nowadays. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, so he's saying uh, should be more disc. Oh no, he's not playing Tactic House, so it's the same amount of discs on this part. Yep. No, it's uh -huh. same amount of discs. I said Player yeah. Two has like, like uh, more discs than Player One. Um, but the difference is, is that with Agaha being way stronger, you can kill more of those discs. Oh, okay. So there was more there. He's on P2 yeah, so as well. More there. Yeah. So you got like you got more discs for being on player two, but with Agaha, you can destroy way more of them as well. Interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> I think the routing is largely the same as you can see though. So he's going to be trying to max out Kakuse gems for this part here, and then he's going to use. Kakusei shot, and again, Agaha makes this way easier because you're using a non-piercing attack to destroy things, which means you can actually target stuff more accurately. It's kind of hard to notice that Tate has um, Kakusei was piercing before. Yeah, it's when you're in with Agaha, when you're in Kakusei, the main shot is non-piercing, but the laser does pierce a little bit, but it's also quite oh, strong okay. as well. <clears throat> So that's why you're not using Kakusei laser that much. Because <laughs> uh, with the oh, piercing, okay. you don't want to be picking up by accident. 
Right, right. Going for this one as well. I think this section here, probably the most difficult section for scoring in this stage. Again, Agaha, a little bit more accurate since you're not piercing, uh, using piercing attacks. There you go. <laughs> Hate this bit, trying to cut back in, God. <laughs> That's always <laughs> scary yeah. to do that. That looked, yeah, peculiar. Particular. Yeah, that's pretty tricky to do it that do that. <clears throat> of course, it looks easy when they do it and they know what the, they're doing and sure. still look kind of <laughs> sus, though. I guess. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of jittery. Yeah. It's coming up to the extend here. Same thing as before, though. He's going to try and get some score here. So he's going to leave one enemy on the left, leave the one in the middle and then link them both together and then while still in Kakusei go and uncover that so that way you're not wasting gems because you have to remember as well that activating and deactivating Kakusei costs gems as well. Mm, right. Like 10 or 20 cost or something like that so you don't want to be constantly turning on and off Kakusei. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. We didn't mention that, I don't think. So that, you, that could throw off your route if you want to yeah. do, like, cancels the stuff. Yeah, it's, it's an activation penalty, so you kind of want to make sure that when you activate and deactivate, you do it with purpose. Yeah. He, Seems he like it won't be too he... hard to pick up the routing, because, I mean, you're going to have, like, sec bigger sections that you're going to have, like, bigger stocks of gems for. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, you just, you know, you could pr probably won't be too hard to get your basic routing going on. Yeah, if you're playing for score, then, yeah, you can, you it's know, cool. you, you're usually scoring quite a lot, so you've got lots of gems in the bank. If you're a beginner though and you're playing this for survival, then yeah, you probably don't want to be constantly mm -hmm. tapping cactus on and off. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself short-handed in place. Yeah, like if you're just playing for survival, it's like I remember I would I would just you know whenever a pattern that looked dangerous was there, I would just activate cactus. But then it's like, oh, well, I don't really have many gems for many parts, or I'm not really yeah. doing much. Like I'm I'm not be able to take advantage of all these parts. So I'm getting like, so I'd end up getting like a lot of like the small chain, like the small cancels and. That does add up, like, you're able to get, like, the 40 million ex or not, isn't that a 40 million extend, or maybe it was, but the second extend, right? Mm -hmm. He was able to get that 14 one, one, yeah. Or 14, yeah, not 40. It's like, I didn't get no 40. <laughs> <laughs> 14, 14, yeah, million. you can get 14 yeah, just I mean, by doing can, that. You can still score, like, around about, you know, 15, 20 million just by playing conservatively in this one and targeting large enemies and bosses, like I mentioned. So, yeah, I mean... Again, if you're playing for score, you can learn a fairly competent route that's you know catered to your skill level, and then start to improve it by changing little bits here and there. That's what I mentioned. That's what I meant by mm -hmm. this game not only has the flexibility, but it's also extensible as well in how you route the game. Um, unlike you know, say a Dodo Apache, where your routing is going to be 100% strict, and if you don't execute it properly, you're going to lose a lot of score potential. In this one, if you go off route, it's not a problem. You can pretty much change up your route a little bit just to incorporate a little bit longer next time or something. Yeah. Um, which is quite nice, I think. It's a good way of actually teaching, you know, score player fundamentals to a lot of beginners, I think. <laughs> the super player makes it look way easy easier than this. No, I think it's actually fairly easy. If you're talking about the, uh, the, um, the routing for the, the third boss in particular. <clears throat> It is quite tricky with Agaha though, because with him being faster, you actually need to do the, the second phase of the third boss unfocused, which means he's flying around the yeah, screen. Yeah, he was really lot. zipping around. Yeah, so you got to macro dodge a lot more with that one. <clears throat> yeah, with Agaha, you're macro dodging all the time though, as you can see. <clears throat> Glitch. Nice. I love the pattern from this stage four though. It's, uh, pretty fun to play this one for score. I said it's very technical. It's not high scoring like stage three is, but uh, if you have a pretty defined route for this, it's actually really entertaining to play for the score. Lots of like linking in small groups of tanks into the big enemies like he's doing here. And you see like, of course, uh, the weakening of the larger enemies and then taking them out is a basic yeah. technique used yeah, throughout the game. Like, uh, damage management. Yeah, very, 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 very important skill to learn in this. I'm actually going to use Guard Barry, but he's going to leave enemies here so that cancels and then he can kill for more gems. 
That's actually Whoa. quite a nice trick. That's difficult to do, though. Wow. <laughs> it's actually really difficult. I don't recommend anyone <laughs> yeah, that doing that. So he was still in Takse there when he came yeah, out. Yeah, so what he did was he used Guard Barrier to phase down the first boss, switch into Kakase to kill for score, and then oh. kill the power barrier for more gems for the second phase. That is, like, really tricky to do. <laughs> nice. Never ever learned that. I don't think you can do it with uh, with Tadaha either. Mm. It's too difficult to do with Tadaha, so I never really tried to learn it. Mm. Yeah. Nice here, though. Here you kind of need to cover both sides of the screen because you get lots of little flying enemies on both sides. And as I mentioned before, you get more Kakase gems if you kill enemies higher up the screen. So here it's easy with Tadaha because you've got white chopper. With Agaha, you're like bombing around the screen a lot more, trying to cover. Like both mm. sides of the screen with your shot. <clears throat> the only thing that makes this character more difficult is the, the amount of movement that you have to do in order to cover the screen. I think more entertaining. It is. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't mind learning Agaha properly in the future, but uh, I just find Tadaha much more consistent to play as. Yeah, I mean, look at all this <laughs> weaving around. Pro yeah, yeah, more prone to errors. Oh my god. Damage management, I think, is slightly <laughs> trickier as well with Agaha, especially since I'm more used to the way Tataha plays. So, with him being more powerful, I have to obviously be more careful with how much damage I'm doing to enemies. Mm. Uh, wishy, wishy asks, does the player also have to be high up for bonus no. jumps? Yeah, to answer that question, no. It's just the enemy needs to be high up the screen. It's like, I think, the top fifth of the screen, so up to the bottom of the, uh, I think it's the gem counter. So oh, it is the just second, the enemy. Okay, yeah, but in Galuda yeah, 2, just it's the not enemy. the same. In yeah. Galuda 2, Jamers, I'm sure it's point blanking rather than um, enemies being at the top of the screen. Mm. <laughs> that was a sweet little move you did there. <laughs> yeah, that, that's uh, that's an interesting one. That you looked can like some Toho shit but... right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can actually milk those discs as well for wow. some score. <clears throat> Which I think uh, most players, like most advanced players, tend to do because they want to try and keep their gold count up, so you actually need to destroy the, the discs. And again, it's random as well, so that the, the disc form um, is randomly determined. The, uh, the boss can actually pick from two attack patterns at that point, and if you don't get the discs, then your gold is lower <laughs> mm. um, when you go for the kill. That was a big glitch back there. That was a cool one. Oh. Yeah, nice, nice big glitching there. So again, kill the second form with over mode to speed it up. And then this one's just tap dodging the way through. So you've got this static pattern, and then you've got these lines of bullets that are actually aimed. It's the aim bullets you just need to watch out for. Nice. Yeah, so 40.4 is pretty insane. <laughs> yeah, there's a pace here. Oof, I think my highest yeah. is like. 36.5 or something. So uh, I have no idea where the rest of those points are. <laughs> oh stage yeah. Five. You just get points for being in over mode too. That, I forgot about that as well. How significant is that? Not a lot. <clears throat> I think uh, you get some ticker points and then you kill enemies for some gold as well. I think you do it more in Galuda 2, though, because I don't see it done that often in Galuda 1. <laughs> mm. Stage 5, lots of cancelling here. <laughs> Game has that cool, like, ripple effect, too, when you're going out of, like, uh, Kakusei and out of it. You like that. Yeah. Not many people notice that, but yeah, the screen does, like, pulse when you switch between forms. It's pretty Quite sweet. nice, actually. <clears throat> Take advantage of the hardware a little bit there. Yeah, like visually, this game is like really nice. It's like one of the, the better games. Eh? Is this when they like really started doing like the pre-rendered, like sprites? Or was yes, that... I believe so. Yes. Yeah, <clears throat> they're really it's good. Like yeah. Era, so. yeah. I, I I do like the pre-rendered sprites. They always look pretty good, at least for cave games. Yeah. No, the. Cave's artwork is always really nice to look at. <clears throat> one, of the, one of the nice things about the stuff that they do. 
Like some of it's really unique as well. Um, I've always had a lot of love for like Guwange because of that. Like I think that's like visually distinct and it also plays really good as well. That was like one of the first things I noticed when I played cave games is that it was 2D and then like the detail was like really intense. I was yeah. like, holy shit, like they still make games like this? That's what I felt like. Yeah, I mean, you look at a lot of the shmups that came out around about that time as well. Like some of them were like moving into 3D. So <laughs> it's actually quite nice to have games that are that were still 2D in some yeah. form. I remember that really left a big impression on me with uh, Mushimi Sama in particular. Yeah. Hey, Mush, Mushy is a, is a really nice game to look at as well. And like I said, I think a lot of that artwork is, uh, it's like, uh, it stands the test of time. Um, oh, yeah. And it's also a really good example of, you know, good art direction within Schmucks. <laughs> I think it doesn't cave, like, use that same background artist for, like, all of their games. Yeah. Like, yeah. that guy is pretty, he's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Guangai does have a lot of personality. That's why I have a, a lot of love for that game. <clears throat> I think it's probably one of their best experimental games. <clears throat> they were just doing banger after banger, you know, and that. Yeah. I just, after, like, you know, pretty much Dodo and Potch came out. Yeah, no, they, they wanted to be more experimental. I think Esperade was probably their first one where they wanted to try something different. I think, uh, was it a... Um, Ikeda was mentioning that uh, he wanted to do something with like flying human characters and found it quite difficult to do. But uh, once yeah. they actually got it down, that's when they started to do it a little bit more often. Because, you know, obviously back then they were doing more ships. Yeah, the character the stuff character. really, I think, pre yeah. pushed the genre a little bit more. Yeah, so... I think yeah, it like was quite nice to see that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Asprey, Guangue with the walking characters, then ESP Gluda, Gluda 2. It's uh, really nice to see, actually. Also, I haven't mentioned it, but the you know, Nile actually goes for two loops, so you actually saw two orbs there. Oh, nice. Quite a lot yeah, of points yeah. from that. Yeah. <clears throat> it's tricky to do the, that because you actually need a specific amount of Kakase gems in order to do it, and you actually need to have enough to cancel not only the entire form, but also have enough to cancel the, the second form, this form as well. This bullet pattern is weird. I think it's partial static, but with some end waves as well, which makes it really tricky to deal with. <clears throat> Do any of the bosses like take more damage on like the wing or the body? No, I versus... think the, the damage is the same across like the entire body of them. So you can shoot them anywhere and it okay. still does the same amount of damage. <clears throat> Sometimes that's a thing. It's figured I'd yeah. ask. Yeah. The thing the guys are saying as well that the second orb burn, whatever it is, is actually harder as well, which is oh, okay. again nice. something they tried to put in after Esperade because um, I think a lot of people complained about Esperade being very easy to milk uh, because every time you face the boss, the boss never really gets any more difficult. So starting from Guange, they actually increased the, uh, the, the difficulty for each um, you know, attack pattern cycle. Mm. Um, which is why, again, here, it's just another example of it. They make it more harder to, you know, cycle bosses for milking. <laughs> and this is where he starts to cash in. So, yeah, Alice, Clone, Ali here. This, this is where you want maximum gold, lots of Kakuze gems, because you're just picking all of these off and you get quite a lot of points here. It's pretty insane the amount of points you get from this bit, actually. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't cash in on my run, but uh, you do get quite a lot here. You can get around about four, maybe five million if you come in here with maximum resources. Do they have like a small enemy base value or the Alice is actually more? I think the Alice is uh, roughly the same, but you get far more of them. And plus there's a lot of bullets as well, which also add to the amount of points that you get. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Just off the gold ingots themselves. But uh, yeah, you. When you get to stage six, you want to cash in on that bit in particular. And then if you die like once on the boss, it's not really a huge problem. <clears throat> um, but your score potential is pretty much nuked if you die anywhere before that part in stage six. Because mm -hmm. there's no place, as I mentioned before, there's no real easy place to recover over mode in ESP glue to one, um, at least not to max. And uh, whenever you get hit, you drop your rank back down to zero again. So. 
it's a bit of a pain. It's no miss or bust in this game, unfortunately. Looks like he's trying hmm. to set something up here. Yeah, he's going for the first wing. That's a cancel. As I mentioned before, you can actually get two cancels here. <clears throat> so he's going to clear that one. Then he's going to start depleting the health gauge until it hits that first notch where the uh, end of the first form is. And then he's going to try and get a cancel on the second wing. Is the reason he delays this so long is because like the bullets are going to be more dense eventually, or? Yes. Okay. He said when whenever the boss forms, whenever the boss attacks cycle, they get more difficult. So he's actually uh. forcefully phasing it um, until it actually gets more difficult. And he's doing it in over mode as well. It's like I mentioned before, over mode speeds up the uh, the bullets, which in some cases actually makes the pattern easier to avoid. <coughs> Especially this this one here with these alternating left right curves. Like if you just leave them normally, they fill up the screen. But uh, in Red Bullet um, Over Mode, it's actually easier to dodge them. Yeah, that's cool. So, uh, get some green gems here. Cancels the attack wave, I think. And then he's gonna take damage down that one until it's almost destroyed. He's gonna wait for this pattern and then cancel it. See how clustered it is now. <laughs> More points there. There we go. Nice. <laughs> and awesome. you can do this entire second form in over mode because it speeds up the bullets, which makes them a little bit easier to just, uh, to avoid. You kind of want to try and pick off the little orbs that spawn at the top, though, because they fire those larger lines of bullets, which then create little channels. But uh, if you kill it fast enough, you don't have to worry about it nearly as much, which is why you tend to do it in over mode because you do you gain do more damage to the, uh, the boss form that way. So for Jacko's phase one, he's going to want to try and score on the first and third bars. Um, so he's got enough gems here. That should be enough to actually get a cancel. <coughs> Once the cancel when it does the, uh, the spiral attack, this one. There you go. And then the second bar is going to over mode to speed the bullets off the, the screen. <laughs> but you can see how much damage Agaha is doing to, to the boss. He's practically That's kind of absurd, already. yeah. It's insane how much damage he does to bosses. Um, which is what makes playing as Tadaha more difficult because you have to last a lot longer through that phase. I actually went and bombed through that. <clears throat> he's going to try and score on here as well, but I think he's actually going to wait until the second pass through on this. So he's going to kill all those Alice clones and then cycles um, not this pattern, but the next one. <clears throat> yep, so spawn some more Alice clones. He's going to kill these. Try not to kill the boss while he's doing it. <laughs> and then I think he cancels this attack pattern. Because this one's the one with the most bullets. There we go. Nice. Mm, cool. So for the wow. second form, I think he kills the first two, like just for the uh, to get them out of the way as quickly as possible. I think he's speed killing this one though. This is actually kind of scary to do because those side bullets are slightly random, <laughs> which makes it harder to get it, get around. <clears throat> he's gonna try and at least get some Kakase gems though, because I think he needs it for the, the third bar. Maybe, maybe not, we'll see. <clears throat> oh, I hate this pattern. <laughs> Bullets appear from the top and the bottom of the screen. <clears throat> We're moving vertical a lot in this one. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. So he's got some gems there. So he's going to use these gems on this phase, on this form rather. This one's actually quite scary, as I said before. I actually find this one more difficult because it does a lot of trap attacks, as you can see here. So the large bullets do have a small hitbox. You can, you know, micro through them a lot easier. But uh, when you've got everything sweeping in from the sides of you, it does get pretty scary sometimes. <laughs> uh, is he going to go for the yeah. score canceller? Yeah, he is. He's setting it up. He wants to wait for the, the, the trap binder, this one. And then he's going to kill it. 
One thing we didn't mention is that on the final phase, the boss has a bomb shield and it also regenerates health if you bomb it, if you use guard power. <laughs> oh yeah, that is worth mentioning. Yep. So you don't want to do that. You can actually bomb in this phase, but you want to bomb to the side of the screen and you only want to tap bomb rather than charge it. So a little tip for most players, if you find yourself stuck here, use a bomb off the side of the screen and don't actually hold down the bomb button <laughs> when you're charging it up. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, <clears throat> you can actually cancel the last phase for for score, but it has a Kakase shield, which gives it 10 times the amount of health, which means um, you actually need to either control your damage very carefully or have oh. quite a lot of gems in order to cancel it. <laughs> but if you cancel it, it's actually worth quite a fair bit as well. Um, I forgot what the calculation is, but it's quite like a... a or 500,000, something like that. So you can actually get quite a lot from it if you plan it, but uh, it's difficult to plan, so a lot of players tend not to do it. <clears throat> All right, yeah, so that's, that was uh, KTL that's Nails a, there. Good stuff. Yeah, extremely high level scoring run there. Yep, huh. 71.4 million. Yeah, it's a uh, very good run, that one. <clears throat> It's slick. a good one to learn, actually, because those routes are actually somewhat applicable to most uh, most learning as well. So nice. There are obviously some tricks in there that are like very um, expert level. Like I mentioned before, the stage four mid boss one is probably not something people are trying to do. But for the most part, there's a there's a few um, you know sections in those stages that most players should be able to you know execute fairly comfortably, um, which would be a good starting point for people who want to try and learn to play for school. Yeah, it's a great uh, cave game for that. <laughs> Just to yeah. start getting into. So this is why it's yeah. kind of been one that we've been needing to do in all this. Yeah, it's probably the the best cave game, not only for like just pure survival play for a lot of beginners, but it's also very um, easy game to get into play, to play for score as well because um, it's not going to pressure you to learn entire stages in one go. You can take it um, a bit at a time and you can also um, make gradual improvements as you start to get better at it as well. So it's a good score game. De I definitely recommend um, players at least give it a go and see what you can do with it. We need more players. <laughs> right, right. That was pretty awesome to watch, and uh, yeah, um, I don't know, not, not too much else to say probably at this point. If anybody has any lingering questions uh, or stuff, just feel free to let us know. Of course, uh, we do need the modern port of this game, um, yeah. so it'd be great if that could come out at some point. And we need that, yeah. we need Futari. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't know, what we else? Need a <laughs> some 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 re some re, yeah some redos on some games Ibarra like I wasn't too happy with the PS2 port personally. Yeah. At least, like, at least the I music would... was high high fidelity. Yeah, I would yeah. love to see like you know Ibarra and uh, ESP Galuda come out on modern systems. One can only hope, but uh, it'd be nice to see that happen because then it'll be more accessible. It'll happen to me eventually. We already have so many cave games now accessible on yeah. Steam now, yeah. so like Absolutely. the world knows that they exist yeah the most part I mean, luckily the emulation for this is actually quite good i mean there yeah. are some sound issues but it is perfectly serviceable in main so for if sure you, if there are players out there who want to give this a shot but don't have access to the ps2 version then you know you can try main oh um, yeah that should be mm -hmm. it's a it's a four button game though so just be aware of that you can you can be quite piano playing at times <laughs> trying to work out what buttons to press when you're learning the game but uh so it is a very approachable game and i think it's uh something i usually recommend to a lot of people to to get into score play with because you know you can start to make very gradual improvements as you start to get better and uh it's one of those things which doesn't pressure you too much into playing all or nothing score play from the beginning you can play like for score for a couple of stages and then survive for the rest of it and then Start to work from there. I really like that, and uh, it's not obvious just from casually playing it that that's the case. So it's just great that we have that kind of spelled out here. Yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, 
I never tried, like when I was playing it, I never really tried to mass up my gems too much. I thought like it wasn't worth it, Didn't I wasn't sure if it was worth it. Um, but if you just have like, yeah, if you just have a nice little route, there's certain things to do. And then of course, like the one of the big tips was like the bigger enemies give you more score and that type of thing. So that was something I just, I didn't really, it's hard to notice when the, when the score is so tiny. Yeah, and absolutely. You're, and you're trying to play the game and all this at the same time. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that isn't really spelled out to you at all, and I think that's one of the the, the main problems of you know the Mops genre in general is that a lot of the, you know the esoteric stuff like score tricks and um, you know systems aren't generally spelled out to the players, and a lot of it has to be you know dove into by you know the more diligent players. Um, obviously, stuff. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. I play games that are quite. Um, quite bad in that regard like you know Garega, Batrider etc etc which don't I mean, really explain systems to you but that's uh, like arcade yeah. that's like an artifact of arcade mentality you know yeah pretty Where much like I mean, players would like make like the guidebooks and stuff and they, the developers I guess maybe expect you to try to just figure it out but you know nowadays it's like you know there's so much more hand holding and all this and it wouldn't I guess it wouldn't be hurt to have a little bit more for certain shmups and stuff so I, you know like Akai yeah. Katana had that uh, Axis did a pretty good like tutorial thing for Akai Katana I remember but it was a little it took a while for you to get through it though <laughs> yeah I mean a lot of arcades like you said are like guilty of that I think a lot yeah. of um, you know, homebrew games are actually making strides on improving that though um, Devil Blade came out recently and that has a really good like in-game manual which teaches you the you know the basics of the mm -hmm. systems and things and i think that's how i would hope that's how developers will actually approach the documentation and the explanation of their games because uh as nice as it is to try and figure out stuff on your own i don't think people have the time to do that nowadays so and yeah um, and sometimes it's just not obvious enough like like i said yeah, when exactly. i was playing this it just it didn't click to me that it wasn't really clicking the way I needed to play to really start skyrocketing the score, and that can that just happens a lot. Yeah, with, uh, from yeah. various mm -hmm. games, depending on the game and depending on uh, kind of what your experience is, I guess as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So hopefully, in the future, we'll actually see better documentation and better explanation of systems. Even in-game tutorials would be helpful because then it'll actually make games more approachable for the people who want to actually play them. But uh, yeah, one can only hope. But at least there's strides right. being made in that in that direction, which is nice to see. <clears throat> hey, thanks for the raid out there. But uh, we are wrapping up our episode uh, 206 on Espagaluda here. This has been uh, this has been cool. Um, yeah, any lingering thoughts here? Uh, hope everyone's doing good out there. Um, the only thing I was gonna say, because I think M9 mentioned this was in a Charles Cup. I forget which one it was but i think it was in like either three or four it's galuda was nice yeah i'm just trying to double check was it two maybe no it was two yeah i, I misremembered it was the second chalice back in like shoot was that 2019 yeah no wonder it feels like a eternity ago <laughs> It's a long time ago. Yeah. And then jumpers destroyed everyone. <laughs> yeah, competition is a good way of learning games, actually. And it's nice that we've got stuff like, you know, the Callus Cup and uh, Schmup's Book Club for people to actually casually learn stuff like that. So yeah, if exactly. You have, if, you're in, if you're in those communities, then absolutely take part because, you know, you might learn something new. It's also, like, replay, uh, also uploadable replays. Please put oh, those yeah. in the modern shmup releases. I hate it when they don't. It's so bad. Yeah, absolutely. So bad. Don't do that. Yeah. Arcade Stadium, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, what the hell, man? Not even no art, no replay of Arcade Stadium games. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of those features <laughs> that we take granted aren't standard yet. So it's uh, you know leaderboards, replays, things like that. Stuff that we would like to have in every shoot 'em up, you don't often see put into them so I guess it's just not yeah. always a easy thing to do is probably what it is so yeah or maybe budget friendly time. or etc etc yeah. yeah things like that but uh at, at the very least a lot of the the 
you know, the good releases that we've had over the years do have that. So that's nice. Like obviously M2 mm -hmm. paving the way for things like yeah, that. So. Definitely. What do we know what the next M2, big M2 releases? Uh, it's, it's the only thing I can think of is because they're still in the middle of their whole tow plant arcade garage. So it's like, oh, I, yeah. I really want them to be like, just get out zone or, you know, Truxton or something out there because I feel like the last couple of releases with like Hellfire and Zero Wing, it's like I get why they might have gone for it, but it's like I feel like they should check out, you know, some of the more interesting titles in there still left in their library. Because I was just mentioning <laughs> this, I was mentioning this to somebody earlier, like the other day. And I think yeah. with the, the M2 stuff, they could quite easily just have, you know, Batsgun, Outzone. Um, yeah, V5 is standalone, and then have the rest of them as like a grouped pack. Yeah, uh, honestly, I don't cause... think you know Hellfire and you know the other ones aren't uh, yeah. are good enough to really warrant having their own standalone like uh, collection. Yeah, I, 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 I get why. They, yeah, I mean, I get why they're trying to do it in two packs, but it's just like it's just taking a really long time, and I feel like. You can probably consolidate and just do, still do something better than like what Bitwave did with their last um, Volume 3 release, where they basically bundled like the last four games they had for their PC ports and basically did it in a month. So the issues were even more noticeable on yeah. those ports. And I would personally like to see them do some other developers, like, you know, Takumi maybe or you know, Taito. Yeah, or I know they announced like some cool. daddies slash like, three or four yeah, years back. Nice the employee just, I don't know if he's actually there at M2. Like, people said he left, but mm. we haven't heard anything no. since that got announced. <laughs> Wolf Fang, Wolf Fang M2. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Wolf Fang M2 <laughs> shot triggers would be pretty yeah. hype, I think. But uh, one can only hope. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I man. Mean, I'm sure they'll be bringing us some great stuff in the future. I mean, as long as they stay around and we buy their stuff, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. So. Yeah. I mean, I've been picking them up as they go, so I'm usually supporting them when possible. Yeah, the Tetris stuff on PC has been especially great, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, guys, let's wrap it up then. Uh, episode 206, Escaluda. This was awesome, and I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And I'm not sure what we got coming up next, but, of course, big shout-outs to Icarus for coming on and doing this. No, no and, problem. Uh, Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for coming on. Always good, and I don't know, I ain't got too much else to say except play Galuda free. <laughs> <laughs> we need free to more play. players. <laughs> and yeah, it's just the, you know, bring us the tunes and all that. Of course, the, the music's great, which we didn't really mention that much, but never gets old. Mm, hell yeah. All right, later, everybody, and uh, do take care, and we'll catch you next time. Bye. See you next game. Later. <laughs>